Mike Clevenger uh, has agreed. It seems like this is still pending a physical uh, to terms on a contract with the Chicago White Sox. We don't have any deals, uh, deal numbers at this time. Um, but we do know that Mike Clevenger is uh, the newest member of your Chicago White Sox pending a physical. Uh, let's just get some in- instant reaction here, Steve, and then we'll break into uh, what this kind of means for the rotation and all that good stuff. It's a move to bring in a serviceable back end major league starter. They have an innings volume issue that they need to address with John Cueto. Um, seemingly not being brought back by the team here, either by his choice or by the team's choice. So we know that they have a void that they need to fill right there. And this is going to prevent them from having to utilize Davis Martin as the number five starter right out of the shoot in spring training. So that I think is a positive thing going with a guy that has had success at the major league level. Granted, it has been a couple of years. Granted, he has had multiple Tommy John surgeries. So there is a high level of risk involved with a guy like Mike Clevenger. Uh, The stuff simply has not played up to where it was 2018, 2019, since he came back from that second Tommy John surgery. So it's not a move that is going to significantly alter the trajectory of the 2023 White Sox in my estimation. I know I've seen a lot of stuff on the interwebs here about uh, just get them into the cat's lab and and let them work. I think as a fan base, we really need to caution ourselves with utilizing that line of thought. Um, I know Ethan Katz has had some success here in his time as major league pitching coach. He got a lot of credit for helping to revitalize Carlos Rodon's career. Um, You know, he's obviously played a, pretty significant role in helping Dylan Cease, Ronaldo Lopez, Jimmy Lambert, and and some other guys. But the wide-ranging assumption that I'm kind of seeing across the board here almost is that he's all of a sudden going to revert back to 2018, 2019, Mike Clevenger, just because he's going to be working with Ethan Katz. I think we need to pump the brakes on that. Yeah, that's a, you know an interesting thing I've seen. The, the Katz lab has been a term that I've seen more today than any other day um, on Twitter. Uh, but just some, some thoughts here on, on Clevenger. I like the signing. I think it's a, a really good name that you've brought in here. Obviously this was a guy who was linked to the Sox, I believe back in 2020, um, ultimately ends up getting traded to the San Diego Padres from Cleveland. He gave the White Sox fits, um, and pretty much every start, uh, that he faced him when he was with the Cleveland Indians at the time. Um, and you know, he's just an interesting case. San Diego is where a lot of good pitchers really seem to go to die. Um, and you know, the, the fact that there's the injury, the Tommy John surgery, a little concerning. And then I would say my biggest concerns here, Steve are, are two things. And the first one is his strikeout per nine is K per nine, uh, in 2022, was a career low, including his rookie year in 2016. That came in at a, a 7.2 here, um, and I, I don't really, I don't really like that number uh, being his career low. Uh, and then also his hit per nine is a, a career high outside of his rookie year in 2016. He did manage to throw. Uh, I believe about 115 innings. I think he came in at about 114 and uh, one third. Uh, So there's the volume that you're talking about. I do think there is some upside here though, Steve, with that, that cat's lab kind of thinking, um, you know, it's, he's a premium name somewhat on this market. Uh, We still got to see what the, what the numbers come out to here. I'm expecting something like one year with maybe an option year, that uh, if Clevenger does return to form, you're not going to see him back. I would be surprised and shocked if there's three years on this deal. Um, but I, I think at this point in time, uh, they they did work some magic with Johnny Cueto last year. Uh, and, you know, this is kind of getting that signing out of the way somewhat early here. And it's just interesting to me that the Sox kind of jumped out on this free agent pitching market when we didn't we heard all we've heard is that they're going to have to go and acquire somebody via trade or you know figure out something of that nature to kind of make an addition here i like the signing i like that they were somewhat aggressive with it um it is a sexier name than what you could have picked up uh so it's got that going for it but 
I, I kind of like the high upside with this. And, you know, if it's a short term deal and he's, you know, looking worse than what Dallas Keuchel did, uh, you could bounce him out of town real quick. So I think that that's kind of my initial reaction to this. It's it's a lot of upside for not a lot of risk. Yeah, a couple things to add on to that. Uh, first is you were talking about the decline in strikeout rate and the fastball velocity. I was just took a quick glance at his uh, page on Baseball Savant. His forcing fastball was just getting hammered last year, and I think that probably is in some way due to the decline in overall velocity that we did see from him. And if I recall correctly, I believe it was maybe his slider that graded out as his best pitch. So kind of makes me wonder if maybe Ethan Katz is going to take a look at that and see, you know, maybe he needs to pitch backwards the way that Dylan Cease has evolved in the sense of utilizing the slider more frequently to get ahead and not be so reliant on the forcing fastball that has been declining from a velocity standpoint. Um, so that'll be something interesting to kind of keep an eye on during spring training, especially and in the early stages of the regular season. As it relates to the contract terms here, I think you're right in the sense that this is not going to be a long-term deal. I'm almost wondering in some of the speculation that I have seen and kind of heard through the grapevine a little bit was maybe a one-year guarantee for about 10 million bucks with an option year on there and maybe like a two or three million dollar buyout um, of that second year kind of getting that total to about 12 to 13 million dollars so we'll obviously have to kind of wait and see what the final terms come out to be here after the physical is completed but if if you do that look that's a type of low risk um, signing that unfortunately this team has to utilize because of where they are at financially and because of who owns them so this well is and i will i will say i mean to to me we can we can sit here and go back and forth on you know the the the, the fact of the owner and what the the payroll structure is and where all this working within constraints i really like this deal um if that's what it turns out to be now what i don't want to see is like i said something 3 years where we're we're over 30 million dollars on something where we're getting locked in because we had to go outbid somebody i'm hoping that, that it's the opposite this time because we've seen that with this white Sox club before steve uh where they're tacking on extra years that they don't have contracts just to get somebody in the door um and this doesn't have that feeling uh to me at least that uh, you know they they went out and overpaid for Mike Clevenger. Obviously, we, we have to wait and see. But at least um, you know just the the way that they were linked to him and the way this developed rather quickly. There was no mystery team in the sweepstakes that came in and and kind of you know mucked that around. I think it'll be beneficial for him to be back in the AL Central. I will say this though: what a shitty year to try and bring somebody back when you're going to the more balanced schedule, uh, I think that kind of works against the White Sox here. Uh, you know, just in terms of his knowledge of the ballparks and of the rosters and of, of how AL Central kind of works. I know he's been a couple of years removed from that, but what you really got to hope for is I think something that you had on earlier, that volume. I'd like to see 150 innings from Mike Clevenger uh, if possible. And, you know, some a little bit of uptick in those strikeout numbers of what you had last season. The other thing that's a little concerning to me, and I was going to ask if you're concerned about it as well, is the fact that he gave up 20 long balls uh, with the Padres last year. Uh, now he's going to be pitching a lot of baseball games in uh, guaranteed rate field. So are you concerned that uh, we're going to see some long ball action off of uh, the the uh the old Mike Clevenger shimmy shuffle uh, at 35th and Shields this summer. That definitely is a concern. But again, I think that's where looking at it and evaluating the pitch mix for Clevenger and trying to optimize his arsenal is really going to be of paramount importance coming to a smaller ballpark that historically does give up more long balls, just as long as, you know, recent vintage White Sox players aren't standing in the batter's box. So, That'll be fascinating to kind of take a look at, but it definitely is something to keep an eye on and monitor here because um, the ball definitely June, July, August carries a lot more at the corner of 35th and Shields than it does with that heavy marine air in San Diego.